So I wrote this book five years ago, six years ago, Cyber War Will Not Take Place, and I was so naive. I, I thought I could end a debate, but in fact I have started a debate. My goal was to move beyond this cliché of cyber war and really connect the technology discussion, the uh, discussion of conflict in the digital age, to its proper history, which is an intelligence history, mainly. And the cyber war trope, I think, leads us into misleading military metaphors. So it's re really not about whether cyber war will happen or not, but whether the term is useful or not. And I think, looking back, it clearly has proven that it is not very useful. And thankfully, we're moving away from it. So here at Strategic Studies and at SISC, we uh, like to study history as well as strategy and policy relevant questions. So when it comes to tech policy, I think uh, it's important to study the history of intelligence because ultimately it is impossible to understand cyber attacks in the 21st century without understanding intelligence operation, uh, intelligence operations in the 20th century. So we're trying to look at the continuity uh, that we see of intelligence operation that can be sabotage, collection, or even subversion um, that we see uh, in this space moving as we move into the digital era. The purpose of the class really is to go from farm to table with information security. We look at um, the basics of how cybersecurity works. We look at uh, how the internet works, how encryption works, how um, network analysis works, how digital forensics work, and then move up to policy level questions. So at the end, students, I think, should be in a position to translate. They would have to be, uh, they can talk and have a conversation with an engineer and then turn around and talk to a policymaker uh, in the same moment. That's the goal. So my advice to students who would like to work in, in, in the InfoSec field is to um, to not be afraid to ask some very basic questions and to get in touch with uh, some basic technology. So to learn you know, some basic programming, a little bit of Python, for example, which is you know, easy. Um, and then not be afraid to ask fundamental questions because the advantage that science students will have is that they are not engineers and not computer scientists, that they can think big picture, speak plain English, and understand political and strategic contexts.